All right, welcome back. Now we're going to see the fourth style of programming paradigm, which is called declarative programming. And declarative is the coolest, most wonderful magic of the four that we're looking at. So declarative has the idea that you don't tell a program what to do. What are all the other programming languages, paradigms? They are do this, do this, do this. OK, maybe it's send message there, send message there, receive message, do something, right? Declarative is like magic. Declarative, you program in rules about the world, rules about the system, and then you query the system, and the system tells you answers. So it really is, if you think of this beautiful cross line, it's much less telling it how to do something and more what I want. So you see the crossover? So declarative is much less how, it's about the what. And the opposite is imperative, where it's mostly about the how to do it, and only if you kind of step back and really look at the code are you seeing actually what it's doing. Okay? So imperative is more about the process, and declarative is more about the answers and the results in a kind of a cool way. So here's some great examples of declarative programming. I might put in all the facts about my family, okay? your whole genealogy tree. And then you ask it, what are the names of my six, of, what are the names of all my second cousins? Boop! It just tells you. I didn't tell it how to walk the tree, okay, if it's equal to second cousin, return, add to a list of the names returning. No, I just, here's some facts, I say, who are my second cousins? Boom. That's amazing. Um, I might ask it other facts, like if I put in other facts about the world and the system, I might ask it facts saying, find me, if I have a car that can hold a thousand pounds, and I have the weights of every, every relative, I say, find me the relatives who would perfectly get closest. If I had four people in my car that can hold four people, get closest to 1,000 pounds. I, that's a lot of code to do that. Well, go through each of the cases of four, and look at the add with the numbers, and the one that's closest, it's kept out, oh, that's best so far, that's my best so far, and then replace each one until I finally get a set of four people that's closest to 1,000 pounds. No, in a declarative system, I could say, here's all my relatives, here's all their weights, find me the relatives that of four of them add to 1,000 pounds closest to that to exactly hit the limit of the weight for some reason. I want to do that. Bam, it just, it just comes back. The process wasn't there. It automatically came up with that answer. Isn't that amazing? So that's, here's another great example. Oh, by the way, the language that we're going to see as an example that is Prolog, we won't see that, but that's if you ever see this in the wild, Prolog is the language people often use for declarative programming. And there are subcategories of logic and constraint. Constraint was what we saw in Sketchpad, right? It didn't say, move this thing to make them right angle. It just says, here are some constraints, and zzz, it does it automatically. See, you were already seeing an example in the Sketchpad video of a constraint-based system. I'm going to show you a logic-based system. How many of you have ever seen these logic puzzles? They used to come out of a thing called Games Magazine, where you'd have these facts and queries on the facts, right? So here's a great example. Five schoolgirls take this examination. Each of them, um, uh, uh, it's actually kind of a, it's like a race. It's less of an example, it's a race. And so there's, there's a ranking to the, to the scores they got in the examination or the, you know, the, the times on their race. And each girl doesn't want to reveal the exact place they are, so they say one true statement, one false statement, just to kind of be clever about it. So each girl says one true statement, one false statement. And if you work it out, there's only one possible ordering of the five girls that has each girl saying one true statement, one false statement, okay? So let's see. So Betty says, Kitty was second, but I was third. And one of those two statements is true, one of them is false. Okay? And Ethel says, I was first, I was on top, Joan was second. Can I get that? So each one is talking about the relative ordering of things, but each one of those girls has one true and one false statement. Okay? So how, did that, how does that get, that get solved? Nowhere in the solution did it say how to go about solving it. All it says is, here's the facts, but somehow a declarative system could then bubble away, and all of a sudden, here's the answer that comes out. And the answer could be, there is no possible answer. There, somehow, somebody, somebody, got, somebody got the wrong thing, and there is no possible permutation of those feral girls in the order of their finish line of their scores that makes each one of them say one true and one false. So you could have out of this system, it say, there's no solution. You could say, there's exactly one solution. Here it is. You could also say, you're under constrained. There are multiple solutions. In summary, we're going to try to summarize what we've seen for the four programming paradigms. The one important piece is that most languages are hybrids. Most languages aren't only functional, only imperative, only OOP, or only declarative. They can do all four. 
And in fact, Snap, the programming language you're working with, can do all four. So it's like, if I say, what does it really feel like? Well, it's like saying, what's the dominant flavor in a fruit juice if you have four flavors? Because it's really hard to tell. You can be in Snap and go functional. You can be imperative. You can be declarative. You can be oop. OK, so it has all of them. Which is the most powerful is a really important question. I'm going to let you think about that one. Which is the most powerful question uh, of all the four? Functional, you evaluate expression and have a result. Imperative, do this, do this, do this, do this. You're allowed to have assignment and mutation in state. Object-oriented says you have these agents, these objects. They're going to send messages back and forth to each other. You either have a factory putting out instances, or you have prototyping where you say, this, is, this, this particular instance is a model for other instances. And declarative is you put facts into the system and you query it for answers, like magic. Okay, Those are the four ways to remember that. In summary, each paradigm has its benefits. The reason we teach you these is because there's like four different tools. It tur sometimes turns out that the problem lends itself to one of the four cases better. Modern languages usually have multiple ones. That's really great. And SNAP can be all four. Thanks so much. All right, folks, we'll see you next time.